In 2023, there are two major choices for your Linux desktop backend. We have Wayland, the new up-and-comer set to replace the old ways, and X11, the tried and true solution currently implemented in the form of Xorg. But as the name would suggest, X11, this is not the first version of X. There have been earlier versions like X6, X9, X10, which did see some level of license use back in the 80s. But what we know as X11 didn't officially begin until 1987. And over the years, there have been many revisions, with the latest version being X11 R7.7 in 2012. But all those older versions, those occurred over a span of three to four years. But X11 has been the main thing for over 35 years. So why hasn't there been an X12 at some point throughout this history? I think the main reason is there just hasn't really been a need for it. And now there is a need for it, Wayland already exists, and a lot of those old X developers now work on Wayland instead but that doesn't mean the idea has never been considered. Xorg Foundation, Xorg Development X12. This is by no means a formal design document, it's just laying out thoughts of what a potential X12 would need to be. Many of these changes are also back-end changes the user would never really see, but there's a lot of really interesting stuff in here as well. X11 was defined in the middle of the 1980s. 1987 for X11, and I believe the first version of X was 1983 or 1984. Since then, computers have changed almost beyond recognition. The simple frame buffer model used by computers at the time has been replaced by programmable graphics hardware that is both complex and powerful. Not only has graphics hardware changed, but the basic processing model has and continues to change. Parallelism, I actually said it right for once, in core system design is becoming the norm, rather than a special case for large systems. And that's just talking about desktop systems. Now there are smartphones, netbooks, this was written a couple of years ago, nobody cares about netbooks anymore, mainly just laptops, tablets, and probably will shortly be other device types that this author can't imagine. In short, X11 was designed for a different era of computing. That's not to say there's an X12 project, there isn't. But if one day there is, requirements for the successor to the X11 protocol. And that's also not to say that X11 is completely broken and needs to be thrown in the bin. What is good about X11? Network transparency. Network transparency rocks. Some may say this is unimportant, but when one looks at the development of Windows and the evolution of RDP, it starts to look a lot more like X in terms of features. So network transparency is basically running the application on one system and then rendering it on another. That original system you're using is typically going to be a lot more powerful. This is a lot like game streaming, for example, where you do all the hard game computation on your PC, on your PlayStation 5, or whatever device you're using, and then you render it on a much weaker device, like a weaker PC, a tablet, a smartphone, allowing you to make use of the power of that other system on a completely separate device. And that's also not to say that X11 is completely broken and needs to be thrown in the bin. What is good about X11? Network transparency. Network transparency rocks. Some may say this is unimportant, but when one looks at the development of Windows and the evolution of RDP, it starts to look a lot more like X in terms of features. So network transparency is basically running the application on one system and then rendering it on another. That original system you're using is typically going to be a lot more powerful. This is a lot like game streaming, for example, where you do all the hard game computation on your PC, on your PlayStation 5, or whatever device you're using, and then you render it on a much weaker device, like a weaker PC, a tablet, a smartphone, allowing you to make use of the power of that other system on a completely separate device. 
as such, maintaining network transparency is one of the requirements. The future will be more interconnected and network oriented, not less. Network transparency makes things easier for users and can't be considered an optional extra. Basically, it shouldn't be an extension to the X12 protocol. It should be a core part of the specification that every display server is implementing. By maintain, I hope they also mean improve, because it's not like the protocol is perfect in its current state. It is a very chatty protocol, as in it makes a lot of requests to do things that other protocols can do in far less requests. This is totally fine on a local connection, which is probably the way that most people are using network transparency. And it's sort of what it was designed for. It was designed on the MIT campus for doing exactly that. But when you start doing things remotely, it can very quickly start to fall apart. And it's a big part of the reason why it's been largely replaced by RDP, Remote Desktop Protocol, and VNC, Virtual Network Computing, which achieve pretty much the same goal, but are a lot less taxing to work with. Plus, they're not tied to X11 and work on pretty much everything. Now, the next point, a lot of people aren't going to be happy with if you know the state of Wayland. Security designed in from the start. So X11 as it currently stands basically doesn't have a security model, has no isolation between applications. There are extra things that can be done, but the way it is typically run, there is nothing. So you can have any application just read keys intended for another application. You can have applications modify and read other windows. And this allows for some really powerful programs like SXHKD. This is a hotkey daemon that is completely desktop independent. So you can go between GNOME, KDE, BSPWM, i3, and have the exact same application controlling your hotkeys. And it also allows great accessibility tools like KeyNav, where you can control your mouse entirely using your keyboard in a really efficient way. These are great projects and I would never want them to go away. The problem is there's no way to reject these permissions. There's no way to say, I want only these applications to be able to read these keys. I don't want any applications to be able to globally read hotkeys. These are not things you can reject because there is no permission system. Wayland has the opposite problem where it also doesn't have the permission system, but it has no global hockey API in the first place, so there's no need for it. I think moving somewhere towards that middle point is where it really needs to be. The point I'm making here is anybody with even basic programming experience can make an X11 keylogger. You can just make a Python script and check what keys are being pressed on the keyboard and log them. You don't need root or anything like that because there's no permissions, you can just do it. Next up, as mentioned before, multiple platform support. This needs to work well on things besides desktop computers. There are other devices out there that might be running Linux where you want to also have a graphical environment. Support modern graphics and hardware rendering, programmable hardware, composition, and all that good stuff. X12 needs to naturally support modern hardware in a way that allows developers to gain access to the hardware without having to completely bypass X, as happens currently. I don't know enough about graphics development and graphics hardware to really explain what the problem with X11 currently is, but I do know enough about the next one. The frame buffer is dead. Long live the frame buffer. For all this talk of modern hardware, let's not forget the frame buffer concept is still extremely useful in certain situations. Killing it off completely is likely to be a serious mistake. So the idea of a frame buffer is buffering a frame inside of your memory. Now, this allows you to do some fun things like drawing things on your TTY without having a full graphical environment available. Or other fun things like playing a video without a graphical environment. Now, this is something that's not really set up on most distros out of the box because it's just not something that most users actually need. But this is something that is supported on Linux. And simple enough, no controversy at all, be as efficient as possible. X has always been a low level protocol. Inefficiencies here will hurt applications. Also, think parallel. We have multiple cores now. So if we have multiple cores, 
maybe we should use them at the same time. Mind blown. Imagine that. It's taken a long time to get to this state where even though we have all of these extra things to work with, for applications to be using them in an efficient way. And it's not like there's no reason for that. Parallel design is difficult, especially when everything you've worked with up until this point has been this very simple single thread where you don't need to worry about locking or anything like that. Expanding horizontally can be a big challenge. But besides the requirements, there are also a lot of errors, oversights, and omissions. Now, a lot of these are more technical and probably are never going to affect you as a day-to-day -day user. It's more of a developer-focused thing, but there's still some fun things in here as well. Grabs can block too much. Popping up a menu and walking away can leave your screen lock unable to lock the screen since it won't be able to grab the pointer. Server grabs are even worse when they lock out all other clients, including those necessary for user interaction like compositing managers, your compositor, and accessibility helpers. This is a great example of X11 being from the 80s. From the best of my knowledge, screen lockers basically didn't exist yet. The earliest screen locker I could find was Windows 3.1 NT in 1993. It's very possible screen lockers existed prior to that point, but they certainly weren't a common feature, especially because graphical environments weren't a common feature yet. And we cannot forget compositing and accessibility. At this stage, just getting a graphical environment working was still a very impressive feat. Compositing, that's something for way into the future, and accessibility, well, accessibility just in the general world wasn't exactly anywhere near where it is today, so it wasn't really a key design consideration here either. Fine-grained events. Property notify is a disaster, and we probably want to be able to get events on things other than Windows. This right here is property notified. Basically, it'll tell you when a property on a certain window has been changed. This is a very generic way of getting the properties. So, like, you gotta do some extra processing to work out what property has changed, then what you want to do with that property, and also... It's only for Windows, but maybe you want to know about properties on your screens or something else like that. Now, back to that point about compositing, composited by default, much like it is over on Wayland. Note that we can more or less accomplish this within X11, but there are probably simplifications to be had by making this explicit in the protocol. Compositing is something that was added way later into the life of X11. Nowadays, you can just do compositing on any desktop you want, but you also just don't have to. I like the idea of compositing by default because compositing is going to give you a generally better computing experience. However, there are certain cases like gaming, for example, where you may want to disable compositing to give you better input lag and things like that. So default is good but not always on. Also, it's worth considering the legacy systems. Anything within the past 10 or so years, compositing shouldn't really be a problem. But there are people running these devices way older than that that still want to keep using a modern version of Linux and would likely want to start using X12 if it ever existed. So getting rid of it there as well might give you a nice speed up. And finally, screens are not helpful. Now, screens are the logical representation of your physical monitor. They're not saying, get rid of monitors because we don't want to have monitors. This is part intractably large implementation problem of not allowing resource sharing among screens, nor screen hot plugging. So you can plug a monitor into a running Xorg server, and it will be detected by XRander, but it's not going to automatically start working, or at least working in a way that makes any sense. If you have proper hot plugging on your desktop, it's because of a daemon running in the background. And part protocol problem. Screens are defined as static, and there's no expressed relationships. Pushing most of r, &R down will help this, as well as rewriting core code. Nowadays, it's pretty common to want to be able to just plug in a screen, and it just magically does something. It just works. Sure, it might not be exactly how you configured it, but at least doing that is a bare minimum. So then, is there ever going to be an X12? 
probably not. Like, as I said earlier, a lot of those people that were working on X are now working on Wayland instead. And unless they decide that all of this stuff with Wayland probably isn't a good idea, maybe it's all just been going in the wrong direction for years now, I don't really see any reason why they would redirect over to an X12 instead. I said it before and I'll say it again, I kinda wish they just called Wayland X12 instead. I feel like a lot of people over the years would have been a lot more forgiving. Like, oh, it's the new version of X. It's not this completely new thing. It's the new version, so give it time to mature, and it's gonna be good eventually. But let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below. Would you have liked to see an actual X12? Do you think the direction Wayland is going is a good one? Do you think that what X12 would have been is basically what Wayland is today? I would love to know. So let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below. If you like the video, go like the video. And if you really like the video and you want to become one of these amazing people over here, check out the Patreon, subscribe, silly bearer pay linked in the description down below. That's going to be it for me and long live X12. <laughs>